if you were to say what what's the AI outcome that you're most looking forward to in the next few years, what would it be? Uh, well, looking forward, that would be healthcare and education, because that's universally good for humanity, and we're actually just beginning a lot of investments in these areas. But honestly speaking, most of our existing investments are in things that are more like uh, face recognition. Um, and finance and uh, semiconductors and uh, autonomous driving. Those are where the money is. But the ones I'm really looking forward to are healthcare and education. So let's take face recognition as an example. So this was the thing that 30 years ago, AI wasn't able to do, but now mm -hmm. AI can very successfully do it. If mm -hmm. I see someone, let's say, robbing a deli 50 yards away, it, right now in America, if I wanted to recognize who this person is so I can track them down, I would have to take a picture, but then do some sort of deal with Facebook, which has the largest collection of faces, and and hope that they would tell me who this is. And maybe they might get it, maybe they wouldn't. Is there a, in China right now, or, or is the AI moving towards a better solution? Well, I think in China or the US, if you have a proper camera installed in most convenience stores or banks, uh, that would, if that's high enough resolution, and that's connected to the police um, a database of criminals, at least you can match that robber with the, um, uh, the criminal database and see if uh, matches are triggered. But in China, if I'm connected to WeChat instead of the police database of criminals, I maybe can find the criminal that much faster. I'll have more photos and more, uh, more people that I have access to photos of. Yeah, I, I don't think WeChat would allow that because you have only access to the people you know. So it's like Facebook, right? It has an upper bound of 5,000 friends. Right. So you could find out if one of your 5,000 friends committed the uh, robbery, but that's not too useful. So, so uh, although it might be in my case, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> in education, you know, you mentioned how it's, you know, we, we've, since the 19th century, a lot of our educational system is, you know, this force, this factory style force feeding of facts and and it's kind of a one size fit all, no matter what the child might be talented at or interested in. How do you think AI can change education? Well, I think the teacher does a lot of routine tasks that uh, we don't usually think about. For example, uh, giving homework assignments, grading them, giving tests, grading them, doing the drills, uh, correcting pronunciation, correcting grammar, um, doing the sim simple math drills, and the uh, and, and the course, and of course the uh, the lecture. Um, may not be best given by each individual teacher, but maybe there are great teachers who could give it. So the combination of AI doing all these tasks plus MOOC, uh, I think can really make AI much more, um, education much more scalable because AI can do a better job than the teacher on let's say half the tasks, freeing the teacher to become more of a mentor. So that is the uh, vision that we have uh, in China because China has um, schools with a highly variable uh, capability teachers, like villages would have uh, pretty poor teachers with limited experience, and cities, there could be great teachers. So we're trying to connect um, them up so that the best teacher can teach a class of 800 uh, using Clicker as an interactive mechanism, and also AI can go in and replace all those homework and tests and that's already uh, beginning to be put in place. How would AI replace the homework? I don't understand. Uh, the AI would assign uh, potentially different homework to each student based ah, on their- it would know which student is having problems and what yeah, areas. Yeah, and then it would grade them automatically. So AI can already grade homeworks for not only multiple choice, but also fill in the blank, um, chemical equation, uh, math proofs and even in, uh, uh, even English and Chinese essays. So, so this starts to get into the crux of the matter of AI, which is obviously AI is this huge boon to society. In many ways, it helps people. It increases corporate profits, which in turn help people further. Uh, but there's kind of a dark side to it. So if we're starting to replace the people who are delivering the food by auto driving cars, if we're starting to replace the teachers, the artists, uh, the, the workers who shelve factories. So everybody from blue collar to white collar, you know, the, the bank lending officers and so on. The, the, the fear is billions of jobs will be lost around the world. Mm -hmm. and, and 
um, you know, and you discuss all the options, like should there be a universal basic income? Uh, should there be a basic income that that is paid to people who volunteer for gov for for you know services that might improve society? Uh, you come up with a lot of uh, interesting solutions, but I want to first ask about the foundation of this. When when ATMs developed in the U.S., you know, it, it seemed to replace the bank teller. You still need to get bigger. You can't have the same profits every year. You need to get bigger and bigger every year. So. Does that solve the problem at all? Just this need for more profits or is still, do we still have the problem? Oh, well, you're talking about, you know, Schumpeter's uh, theory of creative destruction, of course. And that's certainly capitalism with larger volume could create more jobs. But I think the issue is uh, in, in this particular case, uh, in the case of AI, we're, we're largely replacing the um, routine work so that we're not transforming them into more work. In the Industrial Revolution, when artisans who made cars were turned into assembly line, more jobs were created. There were, being, there were lower level jobs, lower paying jobs, but there were uh, tens or hundreds of times more of them. So uh, unemployment was not, not an issue. Uh, I think in the bank's case, uh, the game banks were made more profitable with ATMs, but I think they actually hired uh, ch uh, transitioned a lot of the tellers into uh, customer service, sales, and upselling. So I think that is uh, workable, perhaps for some industries. Um, but I think going forward, uh, we're going to be talking about some bank is going to come out that has no tellers and no, and, and no, um, no branches. We're already seeing that. Um, there will be um, convenience stores with no, um, no clerks. There will be restaurants with no cooks and waiters. And, and those who choose to go for the lowest cost will win a, probably a large part of the business. Because after all, when we go to banks, convenience stores, and fast food places, we're not looking to socialize with the waiters, waitresses, and cooks, and uh, clerks, and uh, tellers. So the human component is not, not so important. Therefore, I, I do think... Um, many of the companies will choose to go fully automated so as to minimize cost. And then when users start to see, oh, if I go to this branchless bank, I get one more percent in interest rate. If I go to this um, humanless convenience store, everything's 20% off. If I go to this um, automated um, uh, fast food, the food is half the price. Then enough people will go there so that's what grows is the fully automated or mostly automated processes. Right. Because like take McDonald's as an example, um, you know, this is this huge, it's the largest restaurant chain in the world. It's also this huge ecosystem where high school students yeah. make enough money to pay yeah. for their basic needs. And you're saying that potentially in the future that might ha not happen because as opposed, it's not like there's going to be your McDonald's concierge who says, "Hey, are you happy right. with your food today?" Or here's why don't we recommend the quarter pounder instead of the Big Mac? You, you, humans are just not going to want that social interaction in those cases. That's right. I think you know Starbucks might or might not be okay. Uh, Michelin restaurants will be in great shape because there will be a lot of people. Uh, there will also be a lar larger number of ultra rich people because wealth in this, um, inequality increases. So uh, there will be high-end uh, restaurants, services, travel agencies that offer phenomenal concierge services, but that's a smaller number of uh, jobs uh, uh, for, uh, compared to the large number that, that would be automated. Hey, thanks for listening to The James Altucher Show on YouTube today. I have more great episodes for you every single week. So don't forget to click my face right now and subscribe to the show. More episodes are here. More episodes are coming. Thanks so much for watching.